നമസ്കാരം മെഡി ടോക്കിലേക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും സ്വാഗതം നമ്മളോടൊപ്പം ഡോക്ടർ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ സംസാരിച്ചിരുന്നു ഓൾറെഡി ഞാൻ മെൻഷൻ ചെയ്തിരുന്നു ഒപ്പം നമ്മൾ മുൻപേ പറഞ്ഞിരുന്ന കാര്യമാണ് അബ്ഡോമിനൽ പെയിൻ ഇൻ ചിൽഡ്രൻ എന്ന വിഷയത്തെക്കുറിച്ചാണ് നമ്മളോടൊപ്പം ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുള്ള ഡോക്ടർ ഇന്ന് സംസാരിക്കുന്നുണ്ടാവുക ലെറ്റ്സ് വെൽക്കം ഡോക്ടർ റിൻസിം ഗുപ്ത സ്പെഷ്യലിസ്റ്റ് പീഡിയാട്രീഷ്യൻ ഫ്രം എൻ എം സി മെഡിക്കൽ സെൻറ്റർ ഷാഹ്ബ വെൽക്കം ടു ദ ഷോ മാം Thank you so much. Thank you for calling me on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I'm going to talk to the doctor about abdominal pain in children. So, if you have any doubts or confusions, I'm going to talk to you about the number. I'm going to scroll down to 0529611333. I'm going to talk to you about the number. I'm going to talk to you about the number. I'm going to talk to you about the number. I'm going to talk to you about the number. You can directly talk to the doctor and uh, clarify your doubts. Once again, welcome to the show, ma'am. Uh, happy to see you in this show first of all so uh, how common is this issue like abdominal uh, pain in children how common is this issue well abdominal pain in children as stomach pain or tummy pain uh, in the normal language they call and it's a very very common complaint mm -hmm. for uh, many of the children like are brought to the opd for uh, this complaint alone like it's a very common complaint oh. and uh, almost every child at some point of time must have uh, experienced abdominal pain at uh, some point of time mm. and about 50% of them uh, do can come to the opd for this uh, complaint uh -huh. so it's very common and uh, in about 10 to 12% of children it can be uh, recurrent recurrent in the sense that uh, there is a specific term a recurrent abdominal pain mm. that's occurring about uh, more than 3 episodes of abdominal pain which are like severe enough to affect the daily activity oh. of the child and uh, and there is not much organic cause for it mm -hmm. this kind of abdominal pain occurring over a month uh, three months period okay. recurrent for about three episodes oh. in that duration it's a specific entity that also is uh, occurring in 10 to 12% of children okay. and uh, it's more commonly seen in 10 to 12 years of age group that's the peak age 10 to 12 yeah okay. but uh, children lesser than that age and more than that also do have it but uh, it's a bit uncommon because uh, it's a functional variety so more understanding more common is the problem so around 10 to 12 years of age it's mm -hmm. more common mm -hmm. all right so yeah. what are the type of uh, the types mm -hmm. of uh, stomach pain like abdominal pains okay to uh, categorize the abdominal pain uh, the there is one variety that is functional okay. there is not much organic cause for it not okay. uh, not too much uh, uh, anatomical structural or mm -hmm. inflammatory or metabolic cause for it okay. that's got that kind of functional pain is the good news is that is more common okay. that's uh, occurring in about uh, that 90% of the children okay. it's that that which category which is not so harmful which is not so harmful it's functional only that is because of some motility disorders like okay. uh, just because of the gut motility mm -hmm. or sometimes it can be because of the hypersensitivity of the okay. gut yeah and uh, a psychological and emotional factors also add up to it oh. so yeah the they ex ex exaggerated because of those factors okay, also okay. so that is in 90% of the cases but okay. 10% can really have some pathological cause for it oh. that can be divided into two types okay. like uh, there can be a medical cause oh. where those are the abdominal pains which can be treated by medicines alone okay but uh, uh, there is uh, another about 2% can have a catastrophic type of abdominal pain where there can be a acute surgical cause for it oh, okay. so among the medical causes the more uh, as the abdomen is a big uh, structure right, itself right. right so many <laughs> organs in it so any organ affected can cause abdominal pain for okay. example if the liver is affected in hepatitis or so there can be uh, abdominal pain yeah. sometimes gastric acidity and uh, peptic ulcer gastritis they cause abdominal pain it can be related to kidneys it can uh -huh. be related to the urinary bladder mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes the urinary tract infections very uncommonly sometimes torsion of a organ like uh, uh -huh. it can be a ovary in females okay or uh, or uh, ectopic presence like uh, a, a, a testis which has not descended down and is in oh. abdomen and is twisted so oh, those okay. kind are very rare not to be scared okay. about it it's very very rare uh -huh. but they can happen okay so, so uh, does uh, food have any connection with this 
Yeah, sometimes as I talked about that 90% which is functional type of abdominal pain, mm. sometimes can be related to not only the type of food we eat, uh. but also sometimes the amount of food the oh. children eat. Okay. <laughs> because if uh, like too much food uh, eaten at a time uh. may sometimes can cause abdominal pain like dyspepsia symptoms. Okay. In this particular type of abdominal pain they may experience nausea, vomiting also along with oh, it. Okay. So uh, that is one, one cause. The other thing is apart from the amount sometimes uh, they may have taken too spicy food. Okay. Very spicy undercooked food. Okay, okay. okay. These also can cause abdominal pain. Okay. Well, there is a separate entity of abdominal pain related to food is like mm. food allergies. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Sometimes uh, if a child is particularly allergic to one particular food, mm. that also can okay. give rise to. Mm. And uh, sometimes toxins and bacterial infections, these also do travel through food only. Some mm. food, water mm. are the uh, sources. So inflammatory conditions which are uh, reaching the body mm. through the food or water also can cause uh, abdominal pain in children. Okay. We usually say that you know if children are eating too much uh, like um, the sweets and all chocolates and all we say that you'll get stomach pain don't eat like that. <laughs> Is it true? Yeah per se uh, sweets and sugary food as such do not cause abdominal pain. Okay. <laughs> yeah but they are anyway harmful right Happy because uh, yeah. to children. <laughs> okay so it's yeah. not uh, it's not a reason. Eating chocolates alone or sugary food as such is not a reason mm -hmm. but sometimes taking too much sugars can increase the colic in the sense that increase the diarrheal output. The okay. stool output is increased because uh -huh. of eating a lot of chocolates and sugars. So in a sense yes, if it is that much to increase the bowel output that uh -huh. means uh, diarrhea uh, then sometimes they can have. Alright, yeah. so once a child is getting stomach pain, when is the stage, the, like the parents should understand that it's time to take uh, her or his, him to a doctor? Yeah, that's really very important The in the sense that when mother is dealing with a child who is having abdominal pain and she has to decide whether now to rush up to right, the hospital right. or not, right? So there are some red flag signs. Okay. So when they pay attention to those things, if any of those things present, yeah. it's better to consult uh, uh, to the doctor. Okay. We have a slide like if we sure. can show. Can you please uh, show the slides? So the uh, red flag signs for mm. abdominal pain, one is the severity. Okay. If the pain is very severe mm. and uh, it's really like the child is doubling up with pain okay. and uh, there is a universal pain scale. Uh, from which we can simulate, okay. right? If the 8 to 10 pain scale, the severity is too much, though being intermittent in nature, the relief period is very less okay. and persistence of pain is more. Okay. So in those cases, uh, just because of that uh, severity, mother cannot understand if it is a functional or it's a, uh, right. there is a reason for it. It's better to uh, go to the uh, OPD or uh, emergency department to consult for this okay. kind of severe pain, okay. right? So uh, a, a pain that wakes you up from the sleep, the child is woken up from the sleep, okay. the pain is so much. Uh -uh. So that sometimes do indicate there can be some reason for it, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Apart from just the motility or spasm. Mm. Apart from that, uh, one very important thing is the localization of the abdominal pain. Okay. The, uh, if the child is uh, pointing the abdominal pain through his palm, mm. like showing towards the tummy, mm. center of the tummy, okay. right, towards the umbilicus. Can you show the, the third slide? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Can you show the third slide? Third slide, please. So if, uh, if this one is showing through the uh, abdomen in a, in a palm, mm. that means very diffuse one, it's more chances of being a functional ah, okay. right so it may be a simply because of uh, increased gastric mo uh, the gut motility right okay but if it is localized to one particular quadrant okay. that means one side one particular side or either if the child is able to yeah either upper down. or the lower okay and if the child is uh, able to like uh, point through fingers Either ah, one okay. finger, two finger, or through three fingers, mm. not by palm. Mm, mm, that mm. means it's a very localized kind of pain. Okay. Then it can be related to the particular organ underneath, right? Okay, like yeah. uh, if uh, he's having a liver pain or somewhere, uh -huh. he would be pointing towards the site of the liver. Oh. 
so uh, okay. this is a uh, appley's rule and it suggests like there is a possibility of uh, organic cause for mm -hmm. this kind of pain so at this this moment definitely uh, she needs to rush to the hospital uh, in a emergency department to show oh okay. yeah to so consult once and there are some other causes also like i mean uh, the other symptoms. Uh, symptoms there can be other symptoms also associated with the abdominal pain abdominal pain occurring with a little bit of nausea mm. or uh, just uh, just one or two increase in the bowel movements mm. like uh, uh increase in the frequency of the stool usually is functional like a diarrhea like a diarrhea okay. little bit diarrhea and a little bit nausea like one vomit or two vomit mm. with a intermittent abdominal pain can be because of a functional variety or also okay. but if there is high grade fever mm -hmm. if the child is having significant vomitings mm. there is uh, very watery and in, uh, too much of a loose motions mm -hmm. and diarrhea mm -hmm. and uh, if there are some uh, abnormal signs like rashes on the body there oh. can be headache and these associated okay. symptoms if they are there definitely these are the red flag signs and okay. uh, the the child needs to be shown to the doctor, uh, doctor definitely right. so once a child is taken to the doctor what is the procedure like how is it consulted like how is the is there any laboratory work up or yeah uh, usually if the child is brought to the emergency department or in a routine opd if okay. the pain is not so severe mm. the doctor usually would take a detailed history mm. so that we can associate like how this pain could have uh, mm. arisen mm. so uh, apart from detailed history a thorough physical examination that mm. rules out mm. a possibility of organic cause as we discussed uh, before like localized to uh. one particular site or associated symptoms they would all uh, point towards a possible organic cause so once if this these all things are ruled out mm. and the doctors do not think about the possible organic cause for this kind of abdominal pain mm. and then in that case thinking it to be only functional or like clinching the diagnosis of a functional mm. abdominal pain the doctor may prescribe some uh, pain relieving medicine uh. or a anti spasmodic or anti colic medicines okay but in the similar case if at home mm. the mother thinks the pain is not so much mm. and uh, she is able to find out like it's a functional only like mm. little bit severity not disturbing the child so much uh, then some home remedies also uh, she can offer like uh... yeah the there is like uh, one very common norm is like whenever the child is sick the parents want uh, uh, the child to eat right oh, okay. but this is the time that you must not push the child to eat oh. so because he is having stomach pain let the child rest and let the gut rest uh -huh, okay? okay so uh, the thing is if he is not willing to eat it's okay let him rest uh -huh. but give a lot of liquids okay. plenty of liquids let him rest and uh, mostly it would go by away by itself okay. if it is still persistent simple pain relieving medicine that normally uh, we keep at home uh. like paracetamol uh. that can be given okay. as for the anti spasmodic or anti colic medicine usually when we have ruled out the other organic cause the doctors can prescribe that medicine okay. right so for home uh, remedies these things can be done at home okay right? like uh, some people give ginger garlic all this that's okay yeah it's actually i was coming up to that <laughs> uh, because uh, there are a uh, few herbs uh. especially in uh, you know in indian society yeah, right. there are few herbs like fennel there are carrot seeds and uh, asafoetida the, uh. the hing right uh. hing sof and ajwain okay. what we call these also do do help in abdominal pain okay. so they can be offered to the child right okay yeah, this uh, gastric trouble or th those kind of things won't affect children much right no no it they, it's, they? it can because okay. nowadays the fast food is like uh, children taking a lot of fast food uh -huh. and lot of spicy food right uh -huh. so uh, this uh, fast food sometimes you do increase the gastric acidity mm -hmm. can cause gastritis though the uh, specific acidity related problems like uh, peptic ulcer disease mm. these are rare in children okay. but gastritis sometimes do occur in children okay. so if it is a high abdominal pain like yeah. that like that is uh, pointing in the epigastrium what mm. we call Uh, sometimes is related to the gastric, gastric. acidity and oh. uh, so uh, for those things 
a soothing drink like uh. a, a cold milk or like a, a normal temperature milk which is uh. not so warm okay. also do can soothe oh, and okay. simple medicines like anti acids sometimes also are like kept in the fridge right mm -hmm. they also can be given to relieve uh, abdominal pain which is very high up and especially like burning kind if it is there it, it can be given it can yeah. be given all right and uh, what are the like uh, a common test needed to uh, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, when the child is brought to the OPD, oh, mm. as I uh, told you, like the most important thing is like we take a uh, full history and uh, a thorough physical examination. And uh, I think at this moment, I will not talk about the organic causes too mm. much because mm. if a hepatitis is suspected or a pancreatitis is suspected or a kidney problem is suspected, there would be a lot of tests like uh, related okay. to the specific condition. Mm. But we, uh, at this moment, I will restrict myself to the functional abdominal okay. pain. So if it is, uh, uh, the diagnosis is for the uh, functional abdominal pain, mostly no investigations would be needed. Oh, so, okay. but investigations can sometimes be done mm -hmm. in those cases where there is a doubt. Mm. Right, where there is a doubt for an organic cause, mm. though it is not localizing mm. somewhere, but still according to the severity or the persistence or the recurrence. Okay. If these things are there, then there are, there are possibilities that we may ask for few tests and these can be uh, some simple tests okay. like uh, a CBC, mm. a CRP, a ESR. Mm. These are the like, uh, though seems to be a bit technical terms, <laughs> but uh, these are mainly to rule out an inflammatory condition or infective condition uh -huh. of the gut. Okay. Like, uh, so uh, those simple tests can be done. Other uh, screening tests for the stool examination and mm. the urine ana analysis. Yeah. These are reasonably enough tests to be done when mm. it is like suspected to be a functional okay. or a recurrent abdominal uh -huh, pain uh -huh. just to rule out any organic cause for it. Mm, mm, mm. Ultrasound in very, very rare cases it would be needed but uh, to relieve the parental anxieties because they are very, very anxious. Yeah, yeah. A child who is having abdominal pain for so many times right. and uh, uh, so severe enough, they are very anxious. Just to relieve their anxiety, sometimes we need oh. to do the test just to make sure that, yeah, uh, just to fine. show them that, yeah, <laughs> not, nothing is abnormal. But ultrasound is rarely needed. These uh, screening tests are usually enough. All right. One yeah. uh, recognized, what is the issue? Uh, what are the treatment uh, measures? Yeah. Uh, we, as we discussed previously also, uh, at this moment I will keep the home remedies aside okay. because we already talked about it. So when the uh, abdo uh, functional abdominal pain is suspected, uh, uh, anti-spasmodic or anti-colic medicines okay. can be given. They can be prescribed uh, in an oral form, mm. but usually if taken by mouth some medicines, we can, uh, I mean it's very obvious that it will be absorbed and will take time to uh. get relief, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the effect a bit uh, delayed, mm. right, mm. of oral medicine. And sometimes the abdominal pain is so severe uh. that we need to act immediately, right? right? right. So in that cases, Similar medicines can be given in an injectable form oh, also. Okay. So, anticholic medicines, pain relieving medicines, they can be given by injection uh -huh. or can be given by mouth depending upon the severity and okay. the tolerance of the child. All right. Yeah. So, is there any so, foods to avoid if a, children, a child is having severe stomach pain? Yeah, uh, as I told you, those are the, the foods which are the cause for abdominal pain should be avoided if the child is having abdominal mm -hmm. pain, right? So, a uh, very spicy food, uh, definitely those should be, uh, should okay. be avoided, All right. not to take too much chili and spicy food. Mm -hmm. More liquids and more bland diet. Mm -hmm. can be more hem ha helpful in these conditions. All yes. right. And uh, coming to the infant uh, children, like babies, uh, do they have stomach pain? Because in night and all, they keep on trying, I mean, they keep on crying and all. So we think that, okay, sometimes maybe she, she or he is having stomach pain like that. Yeah. These uh, infant babies can get uh, stomach pain? Of course. Uh, the thing is, uh, for the babies, to cry is a method of communicating their uh, right. troubles, right? They cannot speak. So they are just communicating any discomfort through cry only. Okay. So a baby who is crying may not always be having only stomach pain, uh -huh. but stomach pain is a very, very well-known entity. 
okay. in okay. new in infants and early newborn period okay. right so the thing is a baby may cry for very simple reasons uh. like the baby is have is hungry uh. he wants to he, uh, feed mm. so at that time he would cry if the diaper is wet how uh. how he can show that the diaper <laughs> right. is wet right so if or he wants to wet the diaper right when uh. he is about to pee <laughs> or when he is about to poop uh. at that time uh, they may cry a uh, cloth which is irritating to the uh, child uh, 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 a ant which which is which may be biting the child uh, 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 so there can be many reasons something right, irritating right, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a hair uh, tunicate something entangled and is irritating the child uh, uh, so the thing is when a baby is crying uh, especially when we talk about early infants uh, right uh, 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 about 3 4 months of uh, child from birth till 3 4 5 months uh, uh, when a baby whenever the baby is crying we must check for these external oh. factors first <laughs> okay. right so make sure that these are not the cause uh, uh. but uh, to talk about the abdominal pain in uh, this age group babies that also is a very well known entity and mm. we call it a infantile colic mm. or it is also known as a 3 months colic okay so the thing is uh, the 3 months colic why it is called it is because it typically starts around 3 weeks of age uh -huh. and it lasts till about 3 months of okay. age and uh, occurring about uh, the cry itself may be mm. lasting for about 3 hours per day oh. a normal baby may still cry for about 1 hour per uh, day uh. in other cases maybe up to 2 hours per day mm. but uh, a baby crying 3 hours per day is uh, abnormal okay. uh, cry okay. and a bit more prolonged and uh, these babies may be having that infantile colic possible okay. so definitely not to quantify that hours of crying uh -huh. but uh, if a baby is crying a lot and especially with the manure of like uh, uh, pulling up the thighs to the uh, to the chest and abdomen okay. like uh, really doubling up if uh -huh, the okay. if an infant is crying in that position uh -huh. like really drawing up the thighs and crying a lot fussy crying lasting longer so this kind of cry cry can be because of infantile colic oh, which okay. is because of uh, increased uh, gastric motility uh -huh. and spasm of the gut okay. and in these particular babies why this uh, kind of abdominal pain occurs mm. there are few reasons for it mm. but one of the very well understood uh, reason is uh, they are taking a lot of uh, they are swallowing a lot of wind right uh. air they are swallowing while they are feeding at uh. that time and while they are crying mm. so they swallow a lot of air that air will try oh. to come out either from up or it will try to come from down okay, okay. so when it is trying to come up from up mm. it is usually causing the regurgitation okay, okay. right and little bit of vomiting right, right but if it is trying to come from down increased flatulence will be there yeah. and it causes a lot of colic to the baby mm. right so the thing is these are the usual cause for the colic in uh, infants so a bit different than the other right, children right, right. but uh, definitely we can help these children one simple manner of burping the child after feeding oh, like yeah okay. if the uh, stomach is held around the area of the uh, shoulder uh. Uh, the baby held high uh. and uh, burped Okay so, so that once a, uh, after feeding after feeding okay. after feeding because he has uh, uh, swallowed a lot of uh, okay. wind air uh. so burping can remove the extra air okay. little bit of gurgitation regurgitation can be there but it can help to relieve that uh, uh, colic which is okay. uh, colic pain which is going to happen so a simple manure but very okay. helpful for the child, for the baby a message to all young yeah. uh, mothers right? yeah <laughs> so burping is very very important uh, especially to relieve the baby from this uh, colic apart from that simple carminative mixture also can be offered to them uh, to help for this uh, abdominal colic ഓൾറൈറ്റ് അപ്പൊ എന്തായാലും നമ്മുടെ പ്രേക്ഷകർക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും കുറച്ച് കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ ക്ലിയർ ആയിട്ടുണ്ടെന്ന് വിശ്വസിക്കുകയാണ് അൺഫോർച്ചുനേറ്റ്ലി ആ ടൈം ഇസ് എൻഡിങ് ഹിയർ അപ്പൊ അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ എന്തെങ്കിലും സംശയങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നേരിട്ട് ഡോക്ടറിനെ കൺസൾട്ട് ചെയ്യാവുന്നതാണ് താഴെ നമ്പർ സ്ക്രോൾ ഡൗൺ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് ഓൾറെഡി നമ്മുടെ ബ്രാഞ്ചും ഒക്കെ മെൻഷൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് എൻ എം സി മെഡിക്കൽ സെന്റർ ഷാബയിലെ സ്പെഷ്യലിസ്റ്റ് പീഡിയാട്രീഷ്യൻ ആയിരുന്നു നമ്മളോടൊപ്പം ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തിട്ടാണ് താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് ഡോക്ടർ റിംസിം ഗുപ്ത ഫോർ ബീ ഹിയർ ആൻഡ് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിനിങ് ഓൾ ദിസ് ഇൻ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് ഫോർ കോളിംഗ് മീ ഓൺ ദ ഷോ താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് വൺസ് അഗൈൻ അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഇപ്പൊ പോവാണ് മറ്റു എപ്പിസോഡുമായി വീണ്ടും കാണുന്നത് വരെ ദിസ് ഇസ് നിഷ സൈനിങ് ഓഫ് ഫ്രം മെഡി ടോക്കിംഗ് വാർത്തയ്ക്കൊപ്പം നന്മയോടൊപ്പം എൻ ടി വി യു എ ടു ദ വേൾഡ്